Now, Louise Redknapp looked to have it all. She sold millions of records with Girl Band Eternal, had a happy marriage, and had even been voted the sexiest woman in the world. But little did we know just how much she was battling with life under the surface. Uh, now, for the first time, Louise Redknapp is opening up on what life was really like in the spotlight. She's written it all down in her autobiography, You've Got This, and she joins us now. Hello, Louise. Hi, guys. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> oh, hi, Louise. It's so nice to see you. So the book is out today. How are we feeling? Are we nervous? Are we excited? Are we both? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously excited, but it's quite a nerve-wracking thing to do. I mean, this isn't an autobiography by any means. This is um, drawing on experiences that have happened from start right up until, you know, now, um, and then kind of putting it into a way that maybe there's a second part of the chapter that maybe helps people, you know, the things that I've been through, I've tried to say what helped me, what didn't, mistakes I've made. So, um, yeah, it's it's scary, but it, it's been a lovely process to do. So it's kind of what what you've been through, what you've learnt, and and I guess where you are now, and 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 kind of maps to to happiness as it as it as it goes. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think that people maybe thought it was some big tell-all, which of course it isn't. And, you know, I never wanted to ever do anything like that. But I do think that um, over the last 25 years, I've experienced lots of different things. And, you know, some lessons have been really bittersweet. Um, and I know when I got asked to do a book, um, I wasn't quite sure what was the right thing for me to do. But I always love a book when I can get up in the morning if I'm having a bad day and open it on any page. And there's just something in there that maybe that day gives me a little bit of a, OK, I've got this. <laughs> um, and I, I wanted to try and create something like that. And your mom was really instrumental to everything, really, to you getting into showbiz. Uh, Lynn was absolutely amazing. Tell me a little bit about your mommy. I know. Do you know when everyone, anyone mentions her, it makes me well up because, um, you know, going through anything tough in life, um, I feel so fortunate that I have her. And, and not only is she like a best friend, she has only got my interests at heart and gives me the honest truth and is completely on my side, even when sometimes I don't like hearing what she's got to say. So um, she's actually sat over there, so I won't talk any more about her. <laughs> she's your number one fan, though, isn't she? She literally encouraged you to get into showbiz, didn't she? Absolutely. From beginning to end, it was just me and my mum on our own for many years. And without her dedication and her going without things and giving me opportunities, I uh, I would never have been able to go to stage school or do any of those things. So I'm um, very grateful. So, Louise, <laughs> does the book uh, cover a lot of the eternal years? Because, yeah, you know, I think we only look back now, we only realise when we look back now just how big... Oh, about the term was, you know, you sold one million copies <laughs> of an album. I mean, that's almost unheard of now for about a million. Um, I know. With Always and Forever. And it's a really exciting time to, to have been in the music industry as well. And, um, you know, I was very lucky. I was in the music industry back when 1.5 million albums in one year was possible in one country. And we got to do so much. And actually writing my eternal days down in the book was lovely because I realised how little we're happy to be proud of our achievements. And I actually ended up writing a whole chapter about what is it about us as human beings that we don't want to maybe acknowledge what we've done and talk about it because we're fearful that we're going to be big headed or so it was really nice writing that down and also pointing out that it's okay to be proud of what we've done and, and we should be. I think it's the British stiff upper lip. We don't like to boast or tell anybody about the good things that we've done. But when you was in Eternal, what was weird is that you, you talk about mentioning that you felt like you was just maybe making up numbers. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that, Louise? I think I was very young um, and I was in a band with amazing, talented singers. And I think it's obviously something that I've battled for many years and only really realised now I'm in my 40s and, and maybe even wrote this book that I always felt that I was catching up, like maybe I shouldn't be there, I wasn't quite good enough to be there. And that's such a big part of the book for all people in all walks of life, not just if you're famous and in a band, you could be in a workplace, in a relationship, in anything. Um, and I think we travelled a lot and I think being so young I'd never really been away from my mom and yeah. my family yeah. so um I just think as a young girl it really took its toll the anxiety of of not quite sure you know you wasn't in control of your own life and though it was an amazing experience I know how lucky I am I think looking back I maybe could have dealt with things and 
maybe not worried so much about everything. Yeah. It's so it's so weird because when I watched you in Eternal, I mean, last night my friend Tim phoned. He was like, Alison, I can't believe you're interviewing Louise Redknapp first of all. She was my childhood crush. But like watching you in Eternal, you were so talented. Like I would never have thought that there was anything wrong. Nothing at all under the surface. You would never believe it at all. Um, you developed some obsessive, um, an obsessive disorder. Tell me about that. I know. Well, that was one thing when I was writing the book. I wrote everything in, and I kept thinking to myself, "I'll take these bits out because they're a little bit embarrassing, and I don't want people to sort of overjudge." And then it was those parts that I think really made the book and were important and absolutely for many years suffered with obsessive compulsive disorder in a, in a really big way. Um, looking back, I think it most probably come from, it was the only thing I could control in my life a little bit. So, you know, going on, you do work and, and you understand the illness a little bit more. But it was things like that that I hope sort of that people out there that maybe suffer with that, then not alone. I had it really badly. I talk about it in the book. Some of the things I used to do it used to take me 20 minutes to be able to go to bed of a night. I mean, it was a, a thing, but I, I feel I've come such a long way since those and those days. And um, and and it's helped me to write it all down, actually. And tell us about Strictly, because obviously it was Strictly that made you realise that you wasn't happy in your marriage. Is that right? Do you know, I think that's so an ease, like, I think... I, I think it's something that it makes it easy to say that. But if I don't think it was um, by any means strictly. I think what strictly maybe did for me was um, it just helped me to, to realise that what was most probably missing was the lack of getting out and working and being a mum at home, which was amazing. My kids were getting older. Jamie was very busy. Um, so I, I, it was no, by no means the breakdown of my marriage, but I think it added to maybe my own complications in my mind as to what I was missing um, in a really big way. Oh, have you got this, though? Have you got this? I don't know, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. You wrote it. You've got this. I know you have, Louise. Well, listen, the book is out today. You've got this by Louise Redknapp. Very excited Good luck to read you, that. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, guys. Nice talking Thank to you. Thank you.